Good evening and welcome to Behind the Headlines. Over last weekend on Saturday the 8th of June in a joint initiative by the Israeli Special Forces and the IDF, we saw an amazing cataclysmic rescue of four hostages. In a rare operation of its kind, successful uh, with only a tragic loss, but uh, only one loss among those forces, we were able to see um, Alistair, four hostages, dramatically, and you could say miraculously, rescued. Yeah, it was such a, such a good news story, because I, I mean, even with, with the biggest optimism that we could, we, we've had, it's been so testing seeing the time element going by for, for these hostages and not knowing if, if they were still alive, we, we were coming across but the IDF were coming across bodies they were finding of hostages who had lost their lives uh, from just the, the, the brutality of, of, of where they were and how they were being treated. So it was so good to hear and see the rescue, uh, dramatic, but it was heroic. It really was a heroic a rescue. And uh, sadly, there was one loss of life amongst the, uh, amongst the troops going in, but um, great to see those people freed up. Noah Argamani, who became one of the main faces of the hostages, mm -hmm. her video of being taken away by civilians on the back of a motorbike yeah. being broadcast widely, uh, screaming, don't kill me, um, 26 years of age, Ahmad Mir Jan, 21, Andrei Koslov, 27, and Shlami Ziv, 41, were all rescued, all having been taken captive, held hostage at the Supernova Music Festival there in southern Israel on the 7th of October. And they were kept in civilian households in an area of Gaza where the IDF has previously not carried out any of its operations. And yet this particular operation that occurred on Saturday, um, maybe that's what took everyone by surprise. Mm -hmm. The IDF had had no presence there. It had not been involved in any operation or initiative in the conflict there up to this stage. And indeed, there were many who had fled to uh, that particular region in central Gaza um, for refuge from uh, the affected areas of the IDF operations. It was carried out in the daytime, originally called Seeds of Summer. Uh, the mission uh, was carried out mm -hmm. following a series <clears throat> of faint maneuvers uh, over the previous days, which were designed to distract Hamas and to draw uh, forces to other areas of, um, uh, of central Gaza particularly. Uh, again, away from Rafa, where so much of the world has been looking, where everyone was saying, all eyes on Rafa. Well, all eyes are, were on Rafa while they were carrying out uh, this significant yes, operation. Yeah, yeah. What were your initial thoughts? Uh, Alistair when you heard the news? I mean, I, I was so joyful. It really was. Uh, I mean, we've been praying for this for such a long time. It, it's, it's a constant prayer for the, the safety or the protection, um, the well-being, if, if, you know, in the most difficult situations for, for, of the hostages. And, and you, you just wanted to hear a good news story like this. And as you say, it came so out of the blue because the, the whole media of the world media has been watching on Rafa and the, the Egypt border and the tunnels that are, have kind of brought a whole new dimension to the way the world has to think about uh, how Egypt has been involved in, in the movement of uh, uh, armory and so on into, into Gaza. Uh, but it was so, so good. and. Uh, uh, joyful, yes, we were rejoicing. Uh, so, how did the families and the people in Israel? They must have been just, uh, it, it just uh, such a good news story. So, we were very, very blessed to follow it through. The special mission, which arguably almost failed, they say it was on a, a very a very thin line of success or a failure, I saw a number of casualties, and the IDF says under 100 deaths, with Hamas reporting initially at least 210 fatalities. That number continues to increase, um, it, it would seem. But uh, while many 
expressed exhilaration and jubilation. There were tears of joy over this dramatic rescue mission playing out for you on your screens right now. Uh, the operation has provoked widespread expressions of outrage among Hamas supporters and sympathizers and others who lack moral clarity over the issue. In this edition of Behind the Headlines, we're asking, is Operation Arnon, named after that fallen Israeli uh, soldier uh, who lost his life shortly following the success of this operation, having been wounded in the initial entrance into one of those civilian houses, uh, is Operation Arnon a turning point in the Israel-Hamas conflict? One hopes that it is. Uh, and, you know, it's so good that they have changed the name of the operation and giving this man, uh, he'll be remembered forever. Uh, he's given his life. And it reminds you uh, the risk these, um, these IDF soldiers and those on the front line take. They're willing to risk their own lives in order to rescue these hostages. And, uh, you know, the, the criticism that comes and the anti-Semitic remarks that come as a result of this amazing operation, it, it, it's, it's just so wrong and uh, I just pray and believe that uh, that people will begin to see these guys are just amazing they're, they're heroes they really are uh, willing to go in and save and, and as you say the, the, the young lady who's been rescued she was the face of that initial attack the other thing we we're talking just briefly about uh, the uh, uh, the, the, the festival that was being celebrated, it was actually a peace festival. They were actually celebrating a peaceful outreach and so on, and yet the horrendous occurrence after. But praise the Lord, things are moving in the right direction and we've got to just keep praying for more and more of these hostages to be found. And re they must have had amazing information, mm. intelligence coming through, uh, and they kept it so well hidden. I know uh, there's, there's kind of talks of why weren't they warned in ahead of time? Well, that would have been ridiculous because obviously <laughs> they'd have moved and moved into a safer... Why weren't they warned? A better question is to ask, well, um, wh why were they holding hostages? Exactly. Release those hostages and... Uh, why, why, why did some 3,000 plus Hamas-led terrorists kill 1,200 people yeah. on the day taking 251 hostages on the day? I think that's something that's we, question. we forget as well. When we see the pictures of that horrific day, October the 7th, you don't realize there were actually 3,000 plus uh, terrorists uh, came in across that border, through the fences, over the fences, under the fences, however they did it, and absolutely terrorized communities, peaceful communities, just living their normal lives on a Saturday morning, on a Shabbat morning, you know, which is a, a crazy situation to, to even start to contemplate. For those of us who have been to Israel several times, we've even been down into that area, to, to then just think of the devastation that was caused at that date. But, uh, well done to the, the IDF uh, troops who've gone in with good in information, good intelligence, willing to risk their own lives in order to rescue. What, these were the real innocents, by the way. You know, I, I, a lot of people talk about the innocents who are losing their lives in Gaza. These were the innocent people who were just like some of our teenagers or older than teenagers, having a, a festival, listening to music, dancing, having good uh, fellowship together and they were the innocents who were attacked and killed, uh, ravagely killed, not just, uh, it wasn't even, uh, you know, like a, a war combat, this was just brutality. Well, let's take in the news as it was released by the IDF spokesman, Daniel Hagari. This morning at 11 a.m., Israeli special forces conducted complex hostage rescue mission and successfully rescued four of our hostages from Hamas captivity in Gaza. Noar Gamani, Almog Meirjan, Shlomi Ziv, and Andrei Kozlov. They are back home in Israel. They are alive. They are well. They will, under, they will undergo medical examination and will soon be re reunited with their families in the hospital. Noah, Almog, Andre and Shlomi were rescued after 246 days in Hamas captivity after they were brutally kidnapped 
from the Nova Musical Festival on the 7th of October. This was a high-risk complex mission based on precise intelligence conducted in daylight in two separate buildings deep inside Gaza. While under fire, under fire inside the buildings, under fire on the way, ha on the way out from Gaza, our forces rescued our hostages. Israeli forces have been preparing for this rescue mission for weeks. They are underwent in intensive training. They risked their lives to save the lives of our hostages. This is what we do in Israel. We risk our lives to save the lives of our hostages. While we are, while we are happy that our four hostages are home, we will not lose sight that 120 hostages are still being held in Hamas, by Hamas in Gaza. Men, women, children. When we say that we will do everything to bring our hostages back home, we mean it. We will not stop fighting for their freedom. Any other decent country in the world would do the same. Well, it's quite important that we recognize this, Alistair, as a joint operation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a joint statement was released announcing the success of it. Officers of the police's elite Yamam counter-terrorism unit, lauded by the former Prime Minister uh, uh, Naftali Bennett as he believes the greatest, the best of these units available. Um, they went in along with Shin Bet agents and IDF involved simultaneously raiding two Hamas controlled multi-story buildings in the heart of central Gaza's Nusrat, uh, according to their statement. Uh, we saw that Noah Argamani had been held in one house. She was rescued at that site while Mayor John Koslov and Ziv were at the second location. Hundreds more soldiers of the IDF participated in the operation alongside those special ops forces. According to the military, Israel Defense Forces spokesman uh, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said that the hostages were rescued by special forces while under fire. And we saw some of that firsthand head cam footage of the intense nature of that. There's other, other video footage Amir Safati had put up, mm -hmm. um, hand cam footage from even locals who were shocked and stunned by what was going on. What was it? This took everyone by surprise. It was on Shabbat. It was in the middle of the day. No one was <clears throat> expecting this. It was in an area the IDF had not been conducting any operations in. And we see there's some um, stories out there as to how they were able to conduct it, but it's believed that some of the intelligence was gained and the go-ahead that it was um, okay to continue with this operation um, by some special agents who had themselves um, dressed as Palestinians. They mm -hmm. had um, made themselves look like Palestinian refugees looking for accommodation in that area. They gave the go-ahead and the special forces went in. It's amazing, isn't it? It was such a precise and well-planned operation. As, as you say, you know, we, we, we kind of it was Shabbat, and it's so, so unexpected because Shabbat is the day of rest. And yet uh, they knew this was the time to get in, and, and, and they knew precisely where these two groups of people, or one single and, and a group of three people were being held. Uh, and it wouldn't have been an easy uh, situation at all. They took every risk going uh, in order to get these people out. And, and even, even when you see the, 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 the footage of the, the, the armed for, army going in, you see the shock on the hostages' faces as well. In fact, I think one of, one of the, the, the girl actually wasn't in belief initially that this was the truth. They, she thought this could be another uh, planned terrorist type of um, war on their minds. Uh, and, and got the assurance when, when, when they actually picked her up and took her out. So very well done, very um, well planned and so, so precise. So 
amazing operation. Spokesman Hagari said the intelligence for this operation was very complex to obtain. No surprise there. He continued to explain how the hostages were held in the homes of Hamas affiliated families who were being paid by Hamas. This was the third successful operation of its kind since October the 7th. The first being the rescue of soldier Ori Migadesh in late October. In early December, the IDF attempted to rescue another hostage, but tragically, he was killed. And in February, hostages Fernando Marmon, 61, and uh, Louis Har, 70, were rescued from southern Gaza's Rafa. All of the hostages rescued by the IDF from Gaza, including the four on Saturday, were saved from buildings and not tunnels. It's believed that uh, there are hundreds of miles worth of tunnels underneath Gaza. They've destroyed many of those tunnels, but it's an uh, expansive network that it, it actually is larger, believed to be larger than the London underground yes. system, posing significant challenges. It's difficult to get accurate intel, and this is, is one of those problems that the IDF has experienced uh, throughout. Now, the uh, tragedy yes. alongside the joy yeah. of the release of uh, the, these hostages was that the father of the rescued hostage, Amag Mirjan, 21 years of age, died hours before he could learn his son was coming home on Saturday. That was for me one of the, well, one of the saddest parts of this whole amazing operation was to think this, this poor father who has been well, ill, sick, mm. to the point where, where he's probably had a heart attack or whatever. His broken heart, that's, that's for sure, he's had a broken heart. And just an hour before the release, uh, he gave up, breathed his last, so to speak. And so he, um, he would have probably known there was a rescue operation going on, but he would never have got to see his son released. So that's a very, very sad side and a human side and a real true story that it's not uh, a Hollywood <laughs> uh, kind of adaptation. This is, a, this is truth. This is what happened. Uh, a man who's for the last 200 plus days has probably been praying and crying out and shedding tears for, for, for the captivity and or the release of the captives. Then succumbs his final breath. Amag's aunt, uh, Dina Jan, had gone to visit her brother to tell him mm. uh, the great news. He had lost a lot of weight, had been very unwell mm. ever since on the 7th of October and the uh, holding hostage of his son. My brother died of grief, his mm. aunt said, and didn't get to see his son return. Uh, the night before Amag's return, my brother's heart stopped. So um, do remember them in your mm. prayers and ask that God would comfort and console um, in this time of blessing mingled with much sadness. Mm. Now, unsurprisingly, Alastair, uh, the condition of the hostages is not great. Uh, they medically are able to walk. They're medically able to stand. They're um, able to see and hear and everything, you know, the, the, the basic medical um, seems okay. Uh, initially, it was said that they were in good medical condition. Um, that was the initial assessment by the eyes. Now they've, uh, they, they've mm -hmm. gone through all of the checks. They're being monitored still in hospital, and um, they have been found to be suffering severe malnutrition. And they um, have extreme psychological and emotional damage that's been called. They're probably, to some degree, in a state of shock that that they're, they're even out. back. They're free, yeah. And they were experiencing sustained periods of brainwashing with uh, enforced Quran readings mm. every single day. And uh, the hostage Noah Argamani said that she had not spoken Hebrew. She had not been able to speak Hebrew in so long. Um, so whether or not that was an enforced practice because she was isolated from others, what was going on. Um, she was held by a civilian family yes. and they told her um, how she should thank God that mm. she was with them um, because it was much worse for others but was basically kept as a domestic slave throughout that time. They were subjected also to daily beatings uh, according to the medical examiner as well.
Well, it's, it's very early days. They, it's only been a few days since the rescue last Saturday. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more uh, time spent with each of these individuals, both uh, to support them, but listening to the, the story. So I'm sure in the, the coming weeks, uh, we may find out a lot more of the brutality of how these, uh, these young people were treated. And uh, thank God that they are out. That's, that's the starting point. But you know, we, we meet with Holocaust survivors who don't want to talk about, and, and even, you know, we had D-Day last week, uh, uh, our own remaining uh, survivors from, from D-Day, they rarely talk about what they saw, what they went through, and it's going to be very difficult for these young people. Uh, you can imagine the dreams and the nightmares that are going on in their lives and, and will continue, but the support system in Israel, if anyone can, can support them, it's going to be Israel because they've lived through trauma. In, since, since 1948, since the, since the state of Israel was reborn. They've had war after war, they've had terrorist attack after terrorist, they've had intifada after intifada, um, bombings on, on buses, bombings on shopping centers. So they will get tremendous support, but they need a lot of prayer. They need a lot of us in the, in the international world to be praying for a real freedom to come in their hearts. Dr. Itai Pesak of Shiba Medical Center mm -hmm. has reported that the hostages, uh, many of whom he has treated himself, suffered from the near constant mental and physical abuse of their captors. He reports that the abuse, quote, left a significant mark on their health and that malnutrition resulted in their muscles wasting away. He told CNN that it must have been a harsh, harsh experience with a lot of abuse almost every day. This was a harsh experience with a lot of abuse almost every day, every hour, physical, mental, and other forms of abuse. It is something beyond understanding. Uh, the eight months that they've spent in captivity, he went on to say, left a significant mark on their health. And although they initially appeared to be in good condition, mm -hmm. all suffer from malnutrition. Mm -hmm. They didn't have protein. They, their muscles are very weak. There's damage to several other systems because of this, he explained adding that the four hostages have reported they were moved several times from place to place that various guards watched over them during their captivity with periods when they hardly received any food at all. Other periods when it was a little better, but overall, he says the combination of psychological pressure, malnutrition, not receiving enough food or the right type of food, medical neglect, confinement to a small, small space, lack of exposure to sunlight and all other factors, this has a significant impact on health. It is. It's, a, it's going to take a long time for these people to come through and uh, a lot of support, but testing times and uh, it, the, the good news is they are free. They are now walking in Israel, not in Gaza. Uh, they walk, well, walking the streets. They're probably in, in hospital conditions with medical people around them, uh, letting them speak, meeting with their families, trying to get back to normality. I mean, I don't know how, you, what, what can normal look like. I'm sure being able to breathe fresh air must be a great bonus because um, they, they've probably been in the tunnels in, in darkness. These, these ones were particularly were, uh, I mean, the, 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 the whole uh, um, operation was done because they were living in accommodation over land, which made it possibly slightly easier uh, than it would have been if they were in the tunnels. Dr. Posak also treated some of the hostages released in the deal back in November, which was around 50 days of captivity. He says that the psychological damage to these four hostages released on uh, Saturday, I should say, uh, uh, rescued on Saturday is greater due to the duration of their captivity. Unsurprisingly, the quote, as the time passes, the hope of being released diminishes a bit, he says, and you start to wonder if it will ever end. Mm. Losing that hope, I think, is where you reach the breaking point, Dr. Pesak added. Yeah. Well, they were rescued, and the news of that rescue was accompanied with scenes of jubilation across the land of Israel and across the international Jewish community and among all those who love the people of Israel. As Israelis celebrate the daring rescue of four hostages held in Gaza, Benjamin Netanyahu's government faces new challenges. 
One day after the raid, Benny Gantz, a member of Israel's war cabinet, announced his resignation. He called for the government to accept the Biden peace plan and for new elections. In order to ensure a real victory, it is fitting that in the fall of the year of the disaster, we go to elections, which will result in the establishment of a government that will win faith and overcome the challenges. Posting on X, Netanyahu asked Gantz to stay. This is the time for unity and not division. We must remain united within ourselves in the face of the great tasks before us. I call on Benny Gantz. Do not leave the emergency government. Don't give up on unity. Many believe elections are dangerous with Israel fighting a multi-front war. Alex Trayman tells CBN News, despite Gantz's departure, Netanyahu's 64-seat coalition is secure, and Israelis want unity as they face multiple enemies. Israelis are fighting uh, in Gaza, left and right, alongside each other, supporters of the prime minister, opponents of the prime minister, and they would have hoped that in this uh, time of uh, intense security crisis that the politicians would do the same. Meanwhile, Israelis are relishing the joy of Saturday's rescue. In an operation months in the planning, IDF Special Forces Saturday rescued four hostages kidnapped by Hamas on October 7th. The family reunions brought a joy and glimmer of hope Israelis rarely experienced in the past eight months. Netanyahu met with the freed hostages and their families, some calling it the biggest rescue in Israel's history since the Entebbe raid in 1976. Hamas claims more than 270 civilians died in the raid, but Israel says the number is less than 100. As the special forces brought the hostages to freedom, they sent the message, the diamonds are on their way home. It's a special privilege to be joined by the former deputy mayor of Jerusalem, Fleur Hassan Nahum. Very warm welcome to Behind the Headlines, Fleur. Thank you so much for having me. Please describe to us the initial reaction, the initial emotions that you went through when you heard uh, about this fantastic rescue of these four hostages. Well, we actually didn't hear about it in real time because uh, in my family, we celebrate the Sabbath and we disconnect from electronics for 24 hours. So this happened on Saturday morning. We went to synagogue as normal, had lunch, and then my daughter uh, went to a friend in the afternoon and her brother's a soldier and he knew all about it. So she came home and told us and, I mean, we were crying with joy. Um, it's incredible that these young people mainly were rescued. Um, what's really incredible also is the bravery of the soldiers. I mean, if you see the footage, which I'm sure you've seen, you just see this sheer motivation and bravery by our soldiers. And tactically, it was a, a genius rescue, the way that they managed to rescue. Mm -hmm. uh, also, one hostage on her own, Nora Gomani, and also the three guys in another apartment uh, close to each other. So the whole thing was almost miraculous. Yes, Fleur, thank you so much for that. It was a, <clears throat> a heroic uh, piece of action, and uh, I'm sure it must have been such a joy. And happening on, on, on the Shabbat uh, it was a very, very uh, interesting time for it. But um, truly, those, <clears throat> those people involved, the, the IDF and the soldiers involved, must have been so joyful. And I've seen some of the reaction <clears throat> that came from around the world, from the Jewish communities, even in Poland, that there was literally dancing and singing, uh, the joy of seeing four more. And it gives hope for us all who are praying regularly for the hostages that they are still alive and uh, negotiations, or at least uh, the, the, the IDF forces need to continue to just work their way through to get them all released and back home. It'll take a lot of time. But I guess there's a lot of medical support going on for the families and the individual uh, hostages at this time. Yes. Well, what was actually, it, it, some of it is, is actually quite tragic. One of the hostages, her mother, is dying of cancer. And, you know, her wish was to see her daughter before she died, and she got her wish. And one of the other hostages, a uh, young man, his father died four hours before he was rescued. So, so tragic that, that he mm. had to die with that pain, probably from mm. that pain, before seeing that his son was safe and sound. Um, I mean, it's it's really, it's really 
a little bit of good news in such a bad and traumatic eight yeah. months for Israel and the Jewish people. I can't, I can't tell you. We need, we needed a win, you know. Mm. We saw tears of uh, grief mingled with uh, tears of elation and joy and excitement at this incredibly, uh, incredible and successful operation. But unfortunately, we've also seen massive backlash and we've seen so much vile hatred of the Jewish nation on social media particularly. You commented on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, the world has officially turned upside down. Victims of a massacre have become the war criminals. A rescue has become a release and people holding hostages have become innocent casualties. Why is there outrage over what seems to be such good news? because they can't stand the fact that we managed to do this rescue. And of course, they've got to tinge it. I mean, you saw what was asked in the BBC. Why didn't you warn them ahead of time? Yeah, so that they kill the hostages or hide them somewhere else. It's just the double standard is outstanding. If you went anywhere in the world, if any, anybody did that to any country in the world, a rescue, which is what happened here, not a release, would have been, you know, people people jumping for joy that innocent people that were robbed from their country and their homes and their beds are finally home. But everything everything Israel is involved in has to be tinged with an element of evil. And that really is what anti-Semitism is. Anti-Semitism is not just another racism. Anti-Semitism always assumes that the Jew is somehow evil in all its intentions and its all its actions. And so what you're seeing today, what we're witnessing today is anti-Semitism rearing its ugly head in a different form. So a hundred years ago, it was ethnic, racial. We were of lower racial value by the Nazis. 500 years ago, it was religious. We were Christ killers. Every generation has its own pernicious form of evil attached to the Jewish people. And also, when this is something very unique about anti-Semitism, that it also hides itself in some type of social justice cause. And so the world are very worried about the Palestinians, and they seem to be very worried about the Palestinians that were hiding these um, these uh, Israelis somehow as their innocent casualties, like I said in my ex. And so again, it is the world turned upside down when terrorists who rape and kill babies are seen as liberators and the actual liberators, the heroes of the Israeli army, are seen as somehow evil occupiers when all we're doing is trying to release our people that were so brutally taken from their homes. That's, uh, it, it, we are living in a very, very strange world where uh, wickedness is, is seen as good and, uh, and good is seen as evil. Uh, it's almost in the language now as when you hear young people speak. But, you know, I'm old enough to remember things like Munich uh, all those years ago, coming up to the Olympics shortly, and, and also the raid on Entebbe, because I worked uh, a lot in Uganda. Uh, and that's one thing we, we really need to applaud uh, the, the forces in, in Israel. They, they do things so well and, and so thoroughly. And rather than uh, take any criticism, I certainly, we are challenging ourselves to make sure the truth is, is uh, portrayed through our station here, but also in our personal lives. So, so uh, we, we, we just realize it's a time to support and, and actually bring unity within the government because, uh, uh, because this is such a good news story for Israel. Uh, we really pray that it would unite uh, the government uh, of, of uh, Israel behind Netanyahu in a very, very testing time. Any comments on that? Yes, we, we have a lot of difficulty here internally mm. as well. Um, there's a lot of criticism on Netanyahu about the war. You know, he's in a position where you, 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 you can't win. Um, ultimately, you can't win. Um, we've offered Hamas already five times um, a deal, a temporary ceasefire, uh, in exchange for our hostages. Five times they've rejected it. Um, and I understand the families. I'm close to one of the families of the hostages and I'm one of those people who's rooting for a deal because they should come home. Um, but yes, the, the situation politically in Israel wasn't great before October 7th. It's not great now, but we just have to just finish and, fi and, and win this war and make sure that Hamas yes. never are in a position to threaten our country and our people ever again. Mm. Has the hostage rescue sent a clear message to the doubters 
as to whether or not this conflict should continue to go forward. Uh, is this marking a turning point in the war? Well, I would think that we are closing in on them. The problem is that they've got so many hundreds of miles of tunnels that this was a successful operation mainly because it was overground. Hopefully, there are more hostages overground, but we fear that many of them are underground and it would be a completely different ball game. Mm -hmm. And uh, any final thoughts on the situation of Britain's mm -hmm. Jews, particularly as we've just since the hostage rescue seen a spate of anti-Semitic attacks, 20 branches of Barclays Bank being uh, splattered with red paint in uh, pro-Palestinian uh, activism uh, initiative. Uh, where do you think things are going to go in relation to global uh, the global Jewish community? Well, firstly, you know, we saw in the European elections this week, of course, Britain is no longer in Europe. But we've seen that there's a big swing towards right wing parties, because I think people have had enough of the chaos. Mm. Um, and, and the fact that there no government or few governments are actually getting the chaos under control for fear of not being politically correct. And I think Europe has voted against that. Europe, Europe has said enough is enough. Um, I'm hoping that Britain will also say enough is enough. One thing is peaceful protests, and one thing is you know, all out vile anti-Semitism. And the line has been crossed too many times. Um, and so if these countries want the Jews to still continue feeling safe and comfortable, uh, these countries are going to have to step up, including Britain. Otherwise, this is the whole point of Israel, of the Jewish nation. Mm. The whole point of the Jewish nation is that wherever we are persecuted, we will have our own home, we will protect it, we will have our own soldiers, and we will be in control of our own self-defense. And that's why with all that's going on, Israel is not the cause of what's going on. Israel is the salvation for what's going on. Fleur Hassan Nahum, thank you so much for joining us. Our love and prayers are with you and with the people of Israel. Thank you. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Good well, that was interview. Uh, from Fleur uh, coming out of uh, Jerusalem uh, and, and such, a, such a lot of insight that we get from within the nation and a lot of the things we're covering there. Uh, praying for unity. You know, we need to continue to pray for unity in the government and progress to be made with the, the whole uh, plan to reach the, uh, the, the, these, these hostages who are in, 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 in a need of rescue. But uh, we thank you, Fleur, for all, all, all that you have shared with us on this um, wonderful interview we've just had. So. Yeah, it was uh, fantastic. And w what we should also say, while well, she's uh, the former deputy mayor of Jerusalem, she's now a special envoy continuing to serve mm -hmm. the nation of Israel. Fleur also has a history with London. Yes. She's spent a significant amount of time in London studying at King's College London. So she's very well acquainted with uh, the situation uh, that Britain's Jews uh, find themselves in and has many uh, contacts and friends here. And this is what I really want us to pick up on at mm. this stage. You know, uh, uh, there'll be some images that come up of uh, some of what has been going on in London since then. You would, yes. you would like to think, wouldn't you, Alistair, that this rescue of four hostages would be met with widespread applause and almost unanimous approval without any outcry, with a full understanding and backing of Israel's right to rescue uh, these hostages uh, from terrorists and those who aid and abet terrorists. But that's not what's happened. We see that Israel once again has become a focal point of many people's hatred. Uh, we saw popular uh, Hamas supporting and sympathizing accounts spewing hate, lies, obfuscations. There was vile imagery, uh, including a caricature of the released hostage Noah Argamani as a pig drinking blood out of a Coca-Cola bottle following a joyous reunion with her father over an ice cold Coke, which was pictured. Okay, why, why not just um, go all the way out with the anti-Semitic imagery and vile hatred and um, act, act as if what happened was uh, out of bloodlust? That's such a sad, sad state of affairs in our nation. And I, th I think, you know, she, she, uh, Fleur actually mentioned how we need to uh, 
change our, our, our attitudes towards you know, making the good evil and the evil good, so to speak. Um, and the, these vile images, that's one of the problems with technology today. You can, you can get your, your bad messages across uh, and people read them and see them. Uh, but, but as a nation, we really need to stand with our Jewish communities because they, it, it's a tough time. And this should have been, and it has been, amongst the Jewish communities, there was rejoicing. I, I remember seeing a, a, a film clip of a, a whole lot of Jewish, Jewish uh, party in, in Poland who were going to visit a museum or a site there, and the news came through, and they just literally got, got dancing and singing and praising uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we need to um, make sure, well, it's a difficult one because there is so much wrong, uh, support for the for, 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 for the Palestinian side of things. So, uh, a lot of prayer needed. We've had others such as the far left Corbynist yeah, uh, commentator yeah. Owen Jones, yeah. who has throughout ever since October the seventh been ubiquitous in uh, his um, expressions of uh, vitriol against Israel. He went so far as to accuse Israel of war crimes in conducting the operation, repeating false and unsubstantiated reports that they uh, disguised themselves in an aid truck and came off of the uh, U.S. aid pier and that this was some form of um, perfidy, uh, this form of subterfuge, which is, according to the U.N., a, a war crime. Um, but he took Hamas's propaganda, he took everything that Al Jazeera was saying uh, when w someone linked to Al Jazeera was actually one of the uh, civilians involved in uh, enslaving these three young men in his ha family home. Uh, and he just quotes this r right and left as if it's valuable information. There's no consideration. There's no recognition of civilian culpability. There's no reference to Hamas's own war crimes and using civilians as human shields, claiming that the lives mm -hmm. lost to obtain the hostages were not worth it. And um, he said, is it worth it to have, can you say, he said, can anyone say, are you happy to say that the loss of life uh, was worth it for these four hostages? And frankly, Alistair, I had to say yes. yes. Because if you, are, if you are aiding and abetting terrorists, if you are a terrorist, it does not matter your age, your stage, your sex, it does not matter. You are guilty of significant crime, you're guilty of um, a grave injustice, not only against these individuals who I remind viewers were civilians, yeah. um, you're committing a grave crime against the image of God. Yeah, and these, these people were sons and daughters uh, of people that are probably the same age as, as my, my sons and daughters and uh, some of the grandchildren I have. Uh, it, it's, it is such a, a sad, I mean, I, I tend to think if, if there were four Brit Britain, Britons out there in, in hostages, would we have the same kind of a reaction? You know, we, we'd have been willing to pay any price or whatever it took to get them freed up. But we've had dual citizens. Yes. We've had dual yes. citizens yes. And, and we've, it's made absolutely no impact. The US especially yeah. has had dual citizens. Yeah. And, you know, th there have been some released and, and the U.S. plays this classic doublespeak where in one moment they're celebrating something and the next they're urging for the very things that uh, perpetuate these mm. types of uh, crises like the latest uh, proposed ceasefire deal. But uh, ignoring some of the ideological uh, driven nature of this conflict. And here's, here's another popular social media account from an Islamist that openly calls for remaining hostages to have suicide belts installed on them in event of similar rescue operations. With confusion, grief, and outrage on display by um, many Palestinians against Hamas, there's widespread video footage of the outcry of individuals who don't seem to have known or seem to have been led astray and deceived in some way uh, in that region in regard to Hamas's activities. They're screaming and crying out, blaming Hamas, calling for them to um, be overthrown, blaming them for the bloodshed on their families and for selling them lies 
boundaries of um, their own promised land, so to speak. Um, with all of that in the aftermath of the IDF operation, coupled with the scenes of jubilation and tears of joy across Israel, uh, many in places of influence, and this is even more concerning mm -hmm. than your um, sort of Z-list social media celebrity and their comments, but p people in places of influence have taken it upon themselves to witlessly lecture Israel uh, out of their own place of ignorance on the conduct that Israel should have had in attempting to rescue these hostages, i.e. they shouldn't have attempted this rescue. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, those hostages were in such desperate situations and they needed to be rescued. I, I, I don't know how these people can think the way or, or even communicate the way they communicate and think it's okay to suggest that, that those, those lives were priceless or not, had of no value, you know. Uh, uh, it's, it's time for a fight back, isn't it? To fight back against what, what is being portrayed uh, across various sites of uh, the media sites. Share with us what uh, the EU's foreign policy yeah. chief, Joseph Burrell, said. Burrell. Yeah, In, yeah. Let, let's just read it. EU's foreign policy chief, uh, Joseph Burrell, in classic political doublespeak, spoke of relief um, that the hostages were free and safe, call, calling for the release of, of, of the others while ba ba baselessly condemning the operation that rescued them as a massacre of civilians. I mean, the numbers of the civilians have been exaggerated. There, there has been death, of course there has been death. It's a war going on, but, but the, the numbers are exaggerated from one side and, uh, and the truth is nothing like the numbers that are being spoken about. Um, <laughs> The UN itself also, so the EU, yep. obviously extremely problematic. We could uh, have a full program on that alone, its yes. take. But the <clears throat> UN was not short of volunteers either uh, who were ready to lambast Israel for its rescue operation. The United Nations Special Reporter on the Occupied Palestinian Territories that's what they refer That's to what it. They That's call the it. title. Yes, call um, it. Francesca Albanese commented, relieved that four hostages have been released. Okay, just one, one, one yeah, sentence. One little line. It sounds a little insincere when then you read, it should not have come at the expense of at least 200 Palestinians, including children killed and over 400 injured by Israel and allegedly foreign soldiers while perfidiously hiding in an aid truck. This is humanitarian camouflage at another level. Israel has used hostages to legitimize killing, injuring, maiming, starving, and traumatizing Palestinians in Gaza, while intensifying violence against Palestinians in the rest of the occupied territory in Israel. Israel could have freed all hostages, alive and intact, eight months ago, when the first ceasefire and hostage exchange was put on the table. Really? Well, um, I, how was that? It's, it's incredibly bizarre. The, the, there's, the expression comes to mind, there are none so blind as those who will not see. Not see yeah. She goes on to harp on, yet Israel refused in order to continue to destroy Gaza and the Palestinians as a people. This is genocidal intent turned into action crystal clear. This is Israel has presented deal after deal after deal. They have agreed term after term after term. Repeatedly, Hamas has refused. We remember when there was a deal back in November, who broke the deal? Yeah, Hamas. Always Hamas. And even through the terms of that ceasefire, there was not a ceasing of ceasefire. Absolutely. From Hamas. Absolutely. It's important to note that the Pentagon did refute the claims by Albanese and others originating from terror supporting Qatar backed network Al Jazeera that the IDF used the U.S. humanitarian pier off the Gaza coast and a humanitarian aid truck. The Pentagon categorically denies that and there is no evidence for it. However, um, Al Jazeera and the Palestinian Chronicle, a journalist of which worked with Hamas in imprisoning three of the hostages, and the Iranian terror regime supporting Tehran Times, all say it is so. So why should the UN believe the word of a free democratic nation? 
This is the problem, isn't it? it, it it's, uh, I mean, there was a lot of criticism on Israel when they took Al Jazeera out of, out of Israel because of the reporting and because of the, 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 the bias against Israel. Uh, but people will believe what they want to believe and um, they, they don't want to believe that, that the true reports that are coming out of Israel from those people on the front line, but they'd rather make up stories, this story about uh, uh, troops hidden in a, in a camouflage truck. It, it just has no, no basis of truth in it, and yet it's, it's being betrayed. And, and the thing is, even, even though, as we read there, uh, uh, the, the Pentagon have denied most of these stories, once it's out there, uh, people hear and they don't listen to, to the denials after. So it's, a, it's created an atmosphere of a difficulty. Outside of social media, we have uh, uh, the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas calling for emergency UN Security Council meetings to deal with what he called a, a massacre, a bloody massacre mm. carried out by Israeli forces. Um, we've also seen in the UK anti-Semitic attacks yep. continuing with uh, Palestine action glorying in their news of vandalizing and trashing uh, completely shattering the windows on uh, 20 Barclays branches mm -hmm. across uh, the UK, uh, furthering their own Jew-hating agenda. Uh, I, I quite agree. We've had Emily Schrader on the program before. She commented in relation to this that journalists and any other Palestinian civilians who hold people hostage are combatants. Yep. And That's the uh, former CIA case officer Ariel Avidar has this insight that Gaza and the Gazan should be terrified of the presence of a terrorist. He should be terrified by the presence of a hostage. He should be terrified that his entire neighborhood will be blown up, that the commandos will come rushing in, but he's not. And that's why he doesn't hand them over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as we enter the final moments of this edition of Behind the Headlines, Alistair, uh, it, it's very important that we back Absolutely. Israel's efforts to rescue the hostages. Um, Colonel Richard Kemp, mm -hmm. a previous uh, contributor to Behind the Headlines, yeah. uh, commended an article in the Sunday Telegraph. Would you share with us some of that article? Let me read it. In October last year, Noah Agamani became the face of no the Nova Music Festival when footage of her kidnapping pleading for her life from the back of her motorcycle was shared around the world. Today, the image of her reunion with her family following a successful rescue operation is a timely reminder of what Israel is fighting for. We need to back them. Uh, and the fundamental justice of its cause. Ms. Uh, Agamani uh, was rescued uh, alongside three other hostages, uh, uh, Almog Merjan and Andrea Koslov and Shlomo Ziv, who were also taken captive by Hamas terrorists at that festival. They had been held by the captors for 245 days. That's how long it's been. The operation to free them was complex and an Israeli soldier was killed during the fighting. The ultimate success of the rescue in such difficult circumstances is a stunning triumph for the Israel Defense Forces and a, a stinging rebuke to the country's critics. It is by force and force alone that the freedom of, all of these hostages has been secured. Calls for a unilateral end to Israel, Israeli military operations, even in the absence of the necessary dismantling of Hamas and without uh, the necessary release of the hostages held in the Gaza Strip, have been dispiritly common. And he says, uh, had they been heeded, had those calls been heeded, it, that it would be frighteningly plausible that these four people would never have been freed to rejoin their loved ones. And um, he it concludes saying that un until uh, everything has changed, changed yep. in this regard. It's a terrible mistake for Western politicians in Britain and elsewhere to attempt to preempt the process by recognizing a Palestinian state before the necessary negotiations that see the dismantling of Hamas and the return of every single hostage um, is concluded. Indeed, it may work to push any true peace back into the distant future, here and now, each sliver of legitimacy is a triumph and miniature for Hamas and Tulun as proof that its tactics of violence and kidnapping will be rewarded by an indulgent West and Israeli attempts at self-defense slapped down. This will only fuel further conflict. 
-hmm. Now, we're down to the last two minutes. Yeah. Alistair, what are some of the consequences? It's, uh, the consequences is that the battle must go on until, uh, until Hamas, the terrorist organization, has been removed. Uh, the ongoing turmoil in Israel government with Benny Gantz, uh, we, we've seen that he, he postponed when the news of the uh, hostage release uh, of his, uh, his, his uh, plan to quit. Uh, but Benny Gantz is quitting with the claim that the Israel cannot fulfill its objectives. But despite the joy of the liberation of these four, there will doubtless be disease at Hamas's latest order. Yeah, this is going to continue to go on, and I don't see the anti Semitism abating the Jew hatred that's rife. This will continue yeah. and ramp up. It is also true that with many hostages still in captivity, uh, that despite the effect of this rescue, it could potentially cause some who are keeping hostages to carry out executions. Well, that's, that's uh, it can endanger. That's but, likely, isn't it? Enough. They know they're in danger. They're likely to shoot the hostages or kill the hostages. But um, that's an order that Hamas has given. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Alistair, for this program. Thank you, our viewers. Continue to pray for the nation of Israel. Continue to give God thanks for the release of these hostages. And Am Israel Kai, the people of Israel, live.